learn to, um, you know, mix their colors properly at each time. And, and that's something that I learned from oil painting. Is, you know, you got to be able to mix that color again and understand where it came from. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a grayscale. I'm going to put that up there so I can see it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up my dark uh, by using the blue and the brown, and I'm kind of vacillating here as to which brown. I think I'll use this reddish brown. And you can see it makes a, a pretty dark dark. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it's almost black in a way. Now these brushes you use in on sables or? Uh, uh, yeah, these are all, well, these are probably synthetic sables, most okay. of them. This might be a really old, this is a really old Winsor Newton sable, I think. They really I, hold up though, then, huh? Well, I, I take very good care. Yeah, I, know, I, yeah, I thoroughly clean, water, yeah. yeah, I thoroughly clean my brushes. My oil paint brushes are separate. They don't touch anything else and they get thoroughly clean. Oftentimes my oil paint brushes will be demoted to the, <laughs> to the acrylic brushes um, after a certain period of time because they won't hold the, the tip. So I'm going to start with the darks and I'm not, I'm not laboring very much. I'm just going to quickly lay in washes of darks. And I've, the primer that I used was a brush on primer and I think it was this um, uh, it wasn't this one. I think this was uh, some kind of flow quill or something. And I really thinned it down a lot and just put washes on. Because the sculpture is so nice, I didn't want the primer to ob obliterate the detail at all. What was the primer you used? I think it was like flow quill. Sprayed on? No, the brush on kind. I like the... I like the Although I, you know, I really should have used a spray on. I, I have trouble with spray cans getting that even coating. So if you do thin washes, even even if it's just not as dark as what you'd like, I'm going to move around quite a bit. So this is going to dry by the time I come back to it, and I can put another layer on. Looks like grab blue instead of my layers, which really doesn't matter. I'd like to know your thinking process. If you had a flat of the ambulance, you'd hit it with primer and then you'd do an overall brown. And then what would your thinking be to detail it out? Uh, start working back and forth with lights and darks. I'd put a layer of either medium gray or lighter gray on and then uh, let it dry and go in you know with a lighter or a darker to pop it out just back it's the it's what i call the dance you know you're dancing back and forth until you reach a medium point Giro screw yeah exactly exactly whoops i keep dipping in that and you know what i'm going to do i'm going to turn that that's the absent-minded professors in the Black okay, now that's a little bit <coughs> lighter gray, so as you can see the washes will flow mm -hmm. into the cracks and kind of delineate, you know, where the detail is. See how you, there was some folds here in the jacket that you didn't see until just now? And then also the detail around the canteen. <coughs> If you thin it out too much, you're going to get this like where the water beads up kind of a thing. Uh, so you have to have some pigment. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, I'm not really, on the underpainting, I try not to spend a lot of time. Um, right about now is where you're going to start seeing the flaws in the, uh, either your cleaning or the uh, primer. It might be grabbing some of the paint. There's a little problem in here in the sculpture that's not quite as smooth, but I think eventually after the paint is built up enough, uh, it, it won't show so much. I'm not going to really worry about it. 
because I use so many layers of paint, it's almost like building up layers of primer underneath the final paint job. All right, and I'm just gonna shadow on here, on this side here. See now the underside of the hat is dry enough. I can put in another <coughs> dark layer. Right. So if, if you build it up slowly, then uh, you can build up nice values real slowly. If you just slop the paint on there real thickly, it's it's hard to do uh, shading and blending later on. Who is that? Is that anybody? This is no. It's just a random, just a random uh, ambulance driver from it's England. Nice, it's a nice. Photo. It is a nice photo. He picked a good photo to do the sculpture from. She's aged a little. Yeah. It's a nice flat. Yeah. Actually, would you call that a flat or a? This is. Half I would call this a half round or a demi round. Yeah. Traditional flats, of course, you know, are like yeah. this. They're pretty darn flat. There's a lot you can do, you know, with both items. You, you, know, you can build huge dioramas with the flats, but you can yeah. see the plan that I have for this one, you know, is a little bit different than what you would be able to do with a flat. When do you know when to quit on this now at the race before you start? Uh, yes, I find the when I feel that it's a complete drawing and all of the light and shadow and detail is in where I want it. And just let's sit for a while. And would you move that thing? You'll actually see. There's an emblem here. You see the paint actually moving. Yeah. After you know, so it's good stuff, but you just have to just put the brush in there. And I don't know. It doesn't smell like. Will your final be rendered in black and white? No, I think I'll tint it you know, with color, you know, give her like a hand colored photograph kind of a thing. Brownish type thing? Yeah, well, that, and I'll put a little skin tone in. They used to hand color photos with oil paint, and so I think that's what I'll do. Like, it's a, I'll paint it as if it's a black and white photo, and then we'll go, I'll go in with oil paint and, uh, and tint it. And then it'll, it'll have more of an antique look to it, which is good. Oil over at acrylic. Yep. Really? Works really great. Can you do acrylic over oil? No. I w well, you can, and I've heard of people doing it, but I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, all right. Because acrylic's a water base, mm -hmm. and if you put a water base over an oil base, it's it's not going to adhere really well. Right? Yeah, it, it will peel. Yeah, it, it will. The oil, on the other hand, right. will stick to just about anything. I mean, you can use oil paints on glass, so mm -hmm. oil over acrylic is not normally a problem. Mm -hmm. I, I knew this guy in high school, he would paint really huge paintings of, like, poison arrow frogs and stuff, and he would do the whole painting in acrylic and then, uh, and then do all the detail stuff and the modeling on the frogs and stuff in oil, and they were absolutely beautiful. So that's kind of where I got the original, you know, idea, and then just looking at old masters' paintings, how they do the, uh, they do a complete painting underneath, you know, in the grayscale, and, and it works out for me because that way I can just, uh, I can do this first, lay in all the lights and shadows, and then uh, I can focus on the detail with the oil paint later on. Are you still going to do the oils and like wash or so on? Oh, yeah. 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 Going to do it and then What's wash. What's your usual drying time if you're doing the oil wash? Overnight? Well, um, yeah, I can work on them the next day after the first paint job because I thin, thin it down so much with, and then I use a turpentine and a linseed oil mm -hmm. as a medium, and the linseed oil is kind of a, a drying medium, okay. so it'll help it dry a little bit faster, so, and then with the, 
with it thinned down so much as the um, turpentine evaporates, that's how the drying process occurs. So uh, I would say overnight is probably good enough for most colors. There are some colors that dry a lot slower, so uh, you know you got to be a little bit careful. But not, I mean, when you're using washes, stuff is going to dry, especially like in Las Vegas. Right? I mean, you know, it's so dry and warm all the time, most of the year. Stuff dries. I just throw it out in the driveway. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, oh, you're coming into the heat yeah. pretty soon out there, right? Oh, yeah. You know what? It's cooler today in Vegas than it is here. Yeah. Yeah, this heat wave is unique to the coast, I think. I know it is. I can't, you know, I can figure that. Yeah, yeah that's, it's really rare, especially this time of year. Let's see, once again up here, the yeah. underside of the hat is dry enough mm -hmm. that I can put another layer on. So I've got like, I've got like three layers of, of the dark under the rim of the hat now. Just from being able to go up and down, waiting for this to dry, I work down in here, put another layer on, and you can see how dark that got compared yeah. to the other areas. Well, you wouldn't go much darker than that, though, on that, would you? No, no. That's the, this is going to be as dark as the darks get. Sure. And um, this is very similar to how I would do a pencil drawing. You know, just keep moving around the drawing, mm -hmm. putting a little more pigment or uh, graphite down. You gotta watch the values on the lighter colors too. You don't want to get them too dark. Yeah, that's the one. Right. Yeah, that's the one. Right. Yeah, that's currently being broadcast. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you would let this sort of dry overnight too when you finish with this? With the acrylic before yeah. I went to oil? Yeah. Definitely let it dry overnight before you hit it with the oil paints. I mean you can go in in a few hours with the oil paints, but I kind of want to make sure that all the moisture is out of it before I hit it with the oil paints. So it's double protection. And the other thing too is that I'm not really paying attention to details. You can see I'm not, I don't have it up near my face where I can see it. The first stage is, for me, for the first stage is a painting of figure is a very quick process. And it's actually kind of the most exciting part of painting a figure because then I'm formulating a plan as I'm painting mm -hmm. uh, the underpainting and it gets me excited to move to the next step.